was already out of the water, lost in thought. I then heard you walking down the beach towards me. Why, yes, I, I can hear that, loud and clear. What of it? Oh, you poor thing. You cannot hear your own heartbeat, can you? I can. It is beating freakishly fast. Are you all right? Huh. Strange. Is that just your resting heart rate? Oh, that is unnerving. I will show you mine so you may see why I am fascinated by this. Thump. 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 That is how fast it beats. The average heart rate of a creature my size is around 20 to 40 beats per minute. It beats more when you are here, though, little friend. You fill it with warmth. I am so sorry. I, I know not where that came from. My apologies if I made you feel awkward, uncomfortable, and... Uh, huh? Oh, you, you... So, compliments are not a sign of weakness? Because I am no softy, you should know by now. Good evening, by the way. If compliments are not a sign of weakness, I suppose I have discovered new horizons. I guess I will say it. I missed you, gross human. Hmm? Why, why look at me like that? I called you gross, did I not? Oh, really? What does gross mean? Because I know not what it means. Oh. Oh. It means disgusting. I... Uh, my apologies, little friend. I, I got called gross too many times to count by... Oh, that makes more sense now. In my past, uh, someone I used to know called me gross quite a lot. I thought it was a compliment. Mm, allow me to retry in that case. My little friend, you are beautiful, I think. Not by my standards, plus you remind me of something bad. But regardless of your looks, I still adore you. No, because you are naive and inferior. Not because you are genuinely considered adorable among dragons my size and your personality and kind words never fail to give me butterflies in my belly or wherever it is. Or, in, in my case, we dragons do not use the terminology of butterflies. We simply would not feel such minuscule creatures in the thick lining of our stomach. We say owls, because they can be quite big, fluttery, and we certainly would feel strong talons inside of us. Plus, they would survive in a stomach longer than a puny insect. Sunderay. What does that mean? If, if that means stubborn, insecure, and willing to use you as a sponge for insults, consider me a true Sunderay. Oh, here come the giggles. If only I could laugh with you, the most I can muster is a faint. <laughs> oh, there is a good reason. A great reason. A tremendously outstanding reason. Little friend, you have noticed how I speak very softly to you, correct? Ah, good thing you have been wondering. I will enjoy the look on your face when I tell you my initial speaking voice is about as loud as a boat roar. Uh, a boat roar, you know. Ah, a, a boat 
horn. Boats have horns like me? Oh, little crusher of dreams you are. But as I was saying, my normal speaking voice is almost as loud as a human vehicle horn. Not only do I not desire to grant you tinnitus, but I shall not be known to the outside world. If that happens, your world may go on yet another lockdown, which I cannot have. It would mean you would be gone for longer again. I digress yet again. If you are intimidated by the idea of my normal voice, oh, my yelling voice, little friend, it is about as loud as a cannon blast, and I will not even dare mention my roar. Unless you are interested. Oh, I see. Well then, imagine lightning striking meters in front of you. But it has a voice. A very furious voice. And a very putrid breath. Hmm. If only I were not hidden from society. Then I would showcase various dragon vocalizations for you. There are a few I can freely do, though, as long as it is not ear-piercingly loud like most of my noises. Yes, you may ask whatever you please. Well, of course I know what music is. I'm not that detached from society. As a matter of fact, music was a rather important and vast role in my culture. How, how has the way of songs evolved since I last listened? Oh, you, you will show me yourself. How? I see no instrument, let alone ensemble, to perform. You did not invite others into the cave, did you? Your phone? Speakers? How would a telephone be used to play music? They are for talking to people over a long distance, and only that. Otherwise, the name would not make sense. I will assume Boomer is a compliment, too. Now, show me however you plan to, will you? I anticipate that music has advanced in ways I could not comprehend and the enhancements would be baffling. heard were often very low in frequency. We took advantage of bass instruments, since we can hear lower frequencies than the average human ear. Might as well have fun with it, hmm? Majority of the time, the only genres that were available and possible to perform were traditional orchestral music and songs you could simply tap your foot to even if you lack said foot. <clears throat> How did an entire ensemble fit into that rectangle? How could it play such a wide variety of sound? 
How could it glow with no source of fire, gas, or bioluminescence? Did, did you humans discover magic? That would make you a lot less bored. I understood half of what you said. Uh, elaborate on what electricity is. Ah, lightning but enslaved by man. I see. How does it play sound so intricately, though? Of course, it is complicated. But would you like to hear a song my father would hum while my family slept? No, I will not sing it. I will share it like you did. I am well aware I have no mysterious human device thing to share it with. I do not need one. Not when magic is present, at least. I will do it in a way much simpler than how you shared it. I will project sound from my mind into yours. Simple. Yes, of course I have magic, as did many souls from where I resided, depending on species and willpower. It is mostly simple, basic abilities like telepathy. We dragons given our size, naturally have more energy to us, giving more of a spiritual advantage, which I have yet to explore. Hmm. Nervous? No need, little friend. I promise, I lack any knowledge I would need to hurt you with magic. Take a seat now, will you? I will have to get fairly close. I hope you do not mind a wing canopy. Yes, the membrane of my wing is rather purple. Everything may be tinted that way. Now it will sound like audio is resonating from my wing. However, it is but all in your head. Are you ready? See? Not so nervous anymore now, are you? How was it? Good. I am refreshed that the music from my home has not withered completely. Hmm. Home. I cannot get my mind off of it, especially since this world does not live up to it. As much as I hate saying, I must stay hidden, since dragons are seen as a myth, 
rather than a common dweller of the mountains, plains, and waters. Despite, despite how I was treated by the other dragons, I miss having them around. But Aldrei who behold it was a sight like no other when they would travel overhead. It made me feel so small, which would make sense now that I think of it. I am not the largest breed of dragon. I am the second largest. The largest breed of all time was only told about in legends, ancient folklore, that of which I barely remember from home. Hey, little friend, before I forget about it entirely, may I tell you about home? Oh, of course you have been waiting for this. Lean against me and make yourself comfortable, comfortable, will you? Do not mind the sogginess. Stay hydrated, little person. That is a good human. Your giggle is terrifying, but anyway. Well. Where to start? Where to start? Allow me to begin by saying dragons, fairies, elves, Orcs, you name it, are real, or were, they have existed nonetheless. The creatures you would often hear about in fantasy roamed and thrived where I came from. I have always spoken of home as a far away land because obviously I am not from this world of yours. To say the least, I am not from this dimension. Oh, that was fun to reveal, was it not? There is a lot more where that came from. I originally came here since... Well, I, I will save the reason I traveled here for a much later visit. I have nerve to build up for that, but consider me a refugee. It took me quite a long couple of years to get used to your world. Your oceans are filled with salt. Ugh. Why would you humans pollute the ocean to the point of not being consumable? Natural. Y you are telling me the ocean is naturally filled with salt? Why? That is uh, unnecessary, but I will not question it. As you can most likely conclude, our oceans were fresh, crystal clear, saltless. Uh. Uh, I am used to salt water now because I cry a lot when you are absent. I have learned to live with it. I do not sugarcoat. But anyway, while this cave may be grand and spacious, this habitat is depressing while compared to the traditional sea serpent home. You see, humans have houses or apartments, whatever you call them. Fairies and pixies have hollows and trees, the classics. Ogres, orcs, and similar creatures have hollowed out hills hidden in plain sight. Elves have hell, <coughs> sorry, and we serpents, we have waterfalls. They serve multiple purposes. They were soothing and serene to bathe and rest under since we are physically tough beings. Each waterfall is very distinct, making it impossible to accidentally tread into another serpent's residence. Whenever we were thirsty, yes, we got thirsty, it was a flawless drinking fountain. And the list goes on. 
my personal favorite part of my family's waterfall was laying my head under it for hours on end, feeling the trickles and tippity taps on my horns. I have some trivia for you. Horns are not for the looks. Not only are they more than useful to those who have no claws or anything to scratch themselves with, but I bet you did not know this. They are sensors more than anything. Dragons that lack whiskers have horns. Small minds often stereotype that a dragon's favorite spot to be scratched or rubbed in is the chin or neck, but that is far from true. You will lose your hand. You guessed it, friend. Our horns. That is the best place to groom a dragon. Only if they trust you, however. If they do not know you, that will be taken as an extreme invasion of personal space. Even more so as a sign of disrespect, and you might as well say your last words. Why? Well, um, if you go up to a dragon who knows nothing of your existence, and stroke or tap their horns, they will see that as a nonverbal way of saying, I am not scared of you, little animal. I see you as so simple-minded that you will trust me right here and now, and they will spare you only if it felt very, very good. Hmm? No, no, that, that is exactly why they use their horns while fighting with other dragons. They are sensitive, like a tooth with exposed nerves. And when dragons clash their horns together as hard as they can, it can be excruciating. However, it is very effective for both sides. The first one to back down is less fit for whatever they were fighting over or for. Yes, indeed, as you can tell, dragons can be so very prideful of their status of apex predators of apex predators. Well, the ones with limbs, that is. What was that? Ah, uh, yes, uh, I have. Fortunately for me, I have endured horn combat only once and briefly. Oh, you dare wonder how it felt. I, I hear you humans and similar creatures complaining about that, that of which you call the goofy bone, silly bone. You, you describe it as every nerve in the area tickling very unpleasantly with a searing sensation. Well, imagine that, but it burns continuously. There is nothing more daunting than a horn ache. I can still feel the impact. If, if you ever have any questions poking at you, no matter how ridiculous, please ask them. Oh, you'll test me, huh? Go ahead, try me, human. How do we reproduce? Well, that is strange indeed, but first, define reproduce. Define sexual. Hmm. Complicated. I have not yet heard of that concept, if that answers your question. We do not multiply like that, let alone do we have those useless organs you mention. How do we stay populated? Well, simple answer. New beings manifest into existence. No intimate contact needed. Is that not how you came to be? Is, is there a word for one who does not do the reproduction? 
Ah, a, a sexual. A sexual what? Oh, asexual. One word. Yes, I suppose I am asexual. As is every being where I resided. Romance, however, is not foreign. We still had romantic attractions. Very much so. Let us say that a human man falls in love with another human man and continue to support each other wholesomely, as you call it. That is considerably normal. Excuse me? Wait, wait, wait. Humans can be punished for that? For falling in love with one who has simply the same gender? Death? Punishable by death in some areas? Oh, primitive minds. Why do you humans discriminate against other humans? It is rather counterproductive, as you are all humans in the end. That has always stumped me. You, you humans go to war with each other, correct? See, that, that is simply baffling to me. Where I originate, we had the occasional hostility between species. If there was any discrimination, it was between species and breeds, not our own species. But I digress. What is this LBT you speak of? LG. That abbreviation is more than two letters. I will not remember it. Interesting. My language has no letter Q, so that makes it more challenging. We have no special name for it either, for it is completely normal and ideal where I come from for love to be expressed in the way it is felt. Love is... Last time I checked, it is harmless, is it not? Oh, no, no, no. Friendships already give me enough trust issues. I can just imagine romantic relationships. I have no love interest whatsoever, no matter how close I be to you. My, my, my trust issues and paranoia go way back. Have I told you about the friend I had before you? Ah, well, this will explain a lot, little friend number two. I had a companion before you came around. She and I met a few human decades ago. Well, technically, a few centuries. I can estimate that you were not born yet, I reckon. She was my first friend outside of family, so I came in not having any expectations. She, well, to, uh, to express my feelings towards her during the present day, she is what you humans would call a bitch. Calls knock in my language. I did not realize it at the time, since I had no experience with friendship, but she took... Wait, a actually, are you fine with me telling you the full story? I have never told it to a soul yet. I have yet to get this off of my scales. <sighs> Delightful. Many thanks for being considerate. Did I use the bitch word correctly? Glories. Now, prepare for a chronicle full of rambles. You best make yourself comfortable. So, come. Come closer, I mean. To my head, where my story will be told from. Are you set, little friend? Perfect. My vivid memory shall prove useful for this. During my youth, when I was not nearly this size yet, the stage of my life was dawning on me where each family member was sent out to do various tasks. 
learning independence just in case, fully on our own. It was our best way of learning, complete immersion. My task was to go into the mainland since we lived far off in the water and catch a noticeably big fish from a lake. Simple task, am I wrong? Yes, very wrong, because it was far from simple to young Violoon. I was around half of my current size, so around uh, 50 feet. I was still large, but small, and we would stay away from certain parts of the ocean because we have a notorious reputation with merfolk, which was the main reason we spent most of our time in lakes and the shore. While I went into a stream passing into a nearby village which knew of our presence, someone and I locked eyes. Not an uncommon occurrence. Dragons get look... sorry, serpents get... fine. Dragons get looks every day. You could be a dragon licking the dirt, and everyone would gape in awe, wondering what noble deed you are doing. The large lake was a freshwater fish sanctuary. The village even had a fishing site there. As soon as I showed up, the fisher folk promptly cleared away. It was quite flattering if I do say so. Oh, how I missed my self-worth. It took a couple hours before I could feel something brush past me and frantically swim away. It was quite a sizable catch, which I had not caught yet. With a whip and a fatally tight coil, I had gotten an arapaima. Quite a lucky catch, indeed. So much so that I heard clapping coming from besides me from a distance. Not a crowd, but one person clapping. It was the person I made eye contact with. Once I made eye contact once again, she stopped nervously. Once I got a closer look, I, I noticed her ears were rather massive compared to the rest of her head, and she was rather pristine looking. I gave her a slight nod of gratitude for the solo cheerleading, and then I left. The end. No, I'm kidding. The next day, I was sent off to yet another task. Hunt down a land animal. This was a bit of a lurch forward, as my kind is a very much underwater type, which was why I was assigned to that. Better safe than sorry in the dragon world. You can never be too prepared. This is the last task I will elaborate on. The rest are bland. As I slithered and sliced my way through the currents, I brainstormed on what to hunt, preferably something that can be seen close to the waters. Each one of my siblings and I had different areas where we performed these training tasks. Mine was the lake next to the local village, a vast town with a vast ecosystem. How convenient for me. As I arrived, I began searching right and left, up and down, for hours. And then I felt something. A pair of eyes watching me from a distance. You, you know that feeling you get when you know you are being watched, yes? Dragons feel it exponentially stronger. When I turned my head to stare at the eyes back, I was met with the elf girl again. On second glance, I could tell she was fairly young, around 9 to 17. I delivered a welcoming smile as I sank back down into the depths of the river, becoming nearly invisible to the human eye. The color of my scales make it that way when I am underwater. Anywho, I almost silently slithered my way to the edge of the river, rising out of it ever so slowly, just like when you first visited my cave. 
I surveyed the meadowy woods before me, and, alas, a young elk. Since my head was barely poking out of the water at this point, it did not notice a thing as it scavenged its way closer by the minute. I could hear my own heartbeat like a bass drum in my skull. As soon as it got close enough for me to barely reach, my tail swiftly exited the water, past my head like a scorpion's tail, and whacked the elk, crushing it fatally, extinguishing its life in a fraction of a second. Blink and you'll miss it. Luckily for me, the girl was not watching as I kept the heap of elk pudding in a coil behind me. I kept it hidden under the water as she beckoned me towards her. I thought to myself, she is a little elf girl, what harm could she bring to me? She said to me in, with a slight tremble in her voice, I've always heard about your kind. Never did I expect to see one, let alone be acknowledged by one. I can see why you are told about in stories and legends alike. Look at your size. I did not know how to respond to such flattery, especially since this young one was so well-spoken for her age, however young she was. I responded with, and, and I quote, Okay, uh, and, uh, you are smaller in person. We stared for a few excruciating seconds as I made haste and escaped that social nightmare. Two days later, I had to return yet again to another task. It was generic, skillful stuff. Boring stuff. Uninteresting stuff. Just like the last two days I was there, I was met by that tiny pair of eyes watching me with admiration. I adored it. I had an admirer. The conversation was a bit longer at that time, and not nearly as awkward as we broke the ice. Her name was Hilza. See, she's already less interesting than you, friend. Day after day, week after week, soon to be months, we began to know each other. I began to enjoy going there for tasks, because she would be there for me, keeping me company. We soon became best friends. After a human year, we became best known as companions. <laughs> she aged faster than me, but also slower than you. While she hit the growth spurt of her youth, I had increased in length by a single meter. Hilza would tease a lot, even more so, I would say, because I grew up with a sister, two of them. I thought it was a bit much, but I probably was not used to such roughhousing in friendships, such teasing. I later found out, surprisingly late, that she was an elf princess. We both had something in common. We were sent to the village. In her case, it was to look after it. We were bored, and we cured each other's boredom. We would begin to go to the village's lake willingly to see each other. Oftentimes, we would go swimming together. Since she could not catch up to me, she would ride on the back of my neck, which I have been wanting to do with you, but we will see. We would make meals for each... Well, she would, she would make the meals for me. Since dragons do not cook, we eat raw. Each cuisine hit my taste buds completely differently. It was fascinating and very disgusting. Over the span of our companionship, we became more open to each other. I spilled my very small insecurities about being a dragon breed that was looked down upon, and she, uh, 
Well, she, she vented about me to me. She seemed rather bossy. As per usual, I dismissed that as yet another aspect of having a close friend. You would have to contort and recondition yourself for one another. I fell for her manipulation. It got worse from there as I kept putting it off and off nonstop. I often found myself thinking friendships are tedious, which they should never be. The beratements from her soon turned physical since I was very tolerant towards Hilda. Even if I was not falling for her tricks, I would still have no choice but to be kind and polite to the princess. Whenever I said something that she did not agree with, or I did not follow a simple order, she punished me like an artificial mother. She would... She would peel a scale off of me each time. Yes, painful indeed, little friend. They take years to grow back. I imagine if I were to pry your fingernail off every time you showed that you are your own person. She eventually drove me into anxiety. I would worry nonstop as talking with my companion felt like swimming through an ocean of mouse traps. I did not tell my family anything, for again, I thought it was normal, until my little brother noticed I was becoming more distant and moody, like I am right now. He decided to bring it up to my parents, who saw the few missing scales around my entire body. They were not happy, to say the least. They told me that making friendships so close during task training could make me reliant. But they, they still believed in me. Even after being upset, they saw my redeeming qualities and instead let those define me rather than my flaws. Unlike Hilza, that is when something clicked. I realized something I should have realized a human decade ago. She did not become friends with me because I am Vilun. She became friends with me because I am a dragon, a naive young dragon who she could take advantage of and become unrightfully powerful since she was not a queen yet. Now keep in mind, I knew nothing about her parents and they knew nothing about me. She could tell them anything and they would take their little angel's word for it. I should have figured that out by the time I confronted her. I was going to do it peacefully without physical violence no matter what she said or did to me. I told her that I know what is wrong with her and why she actually wanted to befriend me. I told her then and there that I would not stand for it and that she would have to change fast for me since she wanted me to change fast for her. Dragons are not pets. They are gentle beasts when unprovoked. And I, I was provoked. I did something you would never want a dragon to do in your general direction. I bared my teeth at her. If a sentient being who knows you as well as you know you bears their teeth at you, it is a telltale sign that you must right your wrongs this instant. That was my first time feeling Hatred. A very minuscule piece of hatred in the back of my mind, but hatred nonetheless. That changed when she stood there, silently, still. She looked up at me with an unpleasantly warm smile. Hilza told me to put everything behind us and we could continue being companions. She had said that before. I said no this time, 
we would not continue being companions. Acquaintances, perhaps. I told her we could be nothing more than that. That was when she showed genuine emotion after a long time and broke down into tears before me. The former companion in me went in closer with reluctance. That was all she needed, because in a last attempt to get at me, she used her long nails to tear a hole in my still developing wings. That was the last straw. I pushed her away and did something I never heard myself do until then. I roared. Dragons often practice their unique roars until they grow into it, but I needed no practice, and I needed no rehearsal. I roared right in her face. Covering her ears did nothing, as I can say with confidence. I gave her permanent hearing damage. That was not nearly enough to pay her back for how she treated me, so about a second later in a blind rage, I put my tail to use like I did with that elk, this time with an elf. The speed of the tip of my tail nearly broke the sound barrier. I could have sworn I heard a bang, but that was my tail, whapping across her face in the ultimate dragon slap. It was mere seconds after the impact that I discovered just how physically powerful sea serpents truly are. And I was, and still am not, even full grown. After the whip of the tip of my tail, I heard a tiny splat. I got a glimpse of a nose on the ground. Half of her fragile facial skin had peeled completely off, along with the entirety of her nose, by me. That was when I regretted making that move. Whether or not it was self-defense or revenge that was deserved, I physically injured her, and there was no going back now. That was all she needed to portray me as the monster. She screamed bloody murder and scrammed clumsily with a blood trail behind her until my line of sight was bitchless. Oh no, that, that is not the worst part, do not worry. That was when my paranoia that you are familiar with officially ignited. I knew not what she was going to do to get back at me, as she always made it priority to get the last laugh. Now that she had obvious proof that there is a beast out there that hurt the princess, I was doomed for the consequences. I told my family all about it in a frantic ramble, and surprisingly they understood most of it. Reassuringly for me, they were completely on my side and they did what they could to comfort me. It, it is one of my darkest yet fondest memories. Dragons are meant to be treated with respect when they deserve it. Sea serpents included. Even though my family and I agreed that it was what she deserved and I put Hilsa in her place, nothing seemed nearly over yet. And I was right. Because the next day, after my break from friendship as a whole, dusk hit. And the hill over the horizon looked bigger, bumpier than usual. Since I had been paranoid out of my mind, I chose a different place to temporarily stay so, so they would not come to my home and hurt my family. And who is they, you might be asking? The elven army, of course, little friend. They were after me, because as the hill got bigger, I realized that it was not a hill. It was an army of 
barely less than a thousand soldiers. Poor folks, they were on the princess's side. When they got close enough, I spoke to them. I meant to say, I mean no harm. Your princess damaged and betrayed me beyond words, and I finally snapped, and I am sorry. But what came out, since I was so irritated more than anything at this point, was I was defending myself, and I did not enjoy it. Check your crazy bastard of a princess. That did nothing but escalate the stakes for me. They worked for the elven royalty, and nothing was going to sway any sides. I would go on about what happened with me and the army, but most of it consists of hiding, panicking, and making the situation worse by defending myself even more. And, little friend, have you wondered what it is like to have a harpoon through your torso? Ah, wonder no more. It is not as bad as it looks, honestly. It was extremely painful, do not get me wrong, but once it is in there for a day or two, you adapt. In case you have been wondering how I learned how human tastes, it was not human, but close enough. <sighs> I reckon elves are greedier than humans, which is saying a lot. That is also how I am so good at hiding now. Uh, and I lived miserably ever after. The end. That was painful to remember, but less painful with you. I be beg your pardon? You enjoyed my storytelling? Really? Well, I've never been told that. I have been told I ramble and derail too much. Then again, that was Hilza talking. Don't try, almighty, that, that felt rather liberating to lift off my chest wherever it is. Uh, hmm? Ah, Daldreo. I nearly forgot to tell you about the Draconian religion. Daldreon. It is fascinating and fun to talk about. Get yourself comf- Get yourself cozy once again, human friend. During thunderstorms, dragons would often be seen bowing and or looking up at the sky with closed eyes whenever thunder would roll. Nearly every dragon would roar alongside it, depending on how religious they are. The largest breed of dragon is that of Daldreo, the first dragon. Thunder in my language is called Daldon. For it is believed that thunder is the sound of Daldreu's calls from beyond, empowering those with thick of scales and vast of wings, mending those with flimsy of character. Rumor has it, during intense storms, his silhouette would be seen through the clouds, around a kilometer big at least. That is all I know about Daldon. It is primarily land dragons that believe in it. However, I find it fascinating. I find it uh, nostalgic. That seems to be a feeling I can never shake when you come along, little friend. You bring me nostalgia. Since I associate friendship and warmth with home, family, hope. It turns me fairly sentimental, filled with saudade and forlornness. When it comes to emotions, dragons differ only slightly from you. As you can tell, I feel grief just like you. Despite this, the main difference we have is our bonds with others. Dragons are typically mentally merged with their families. 
they do not reach an age where they live on their own, unless they are an outlier who chooses to do so, which is not uncommon. We, for the most part, do not cherish gold, doubloons, you name it. We cherish our families and bonds in general. And to, to put it to put it lightly, I I find myself deprived of family. To a dragon family is as important as food is to you. And I miss them. I, <clears throat> I miss my mother's coils around me when I would come back to our waterfall after a long day. I miss, oh, I miss roaming freely without a single paranoid bone in my vertebrae. I miss, I miss the good treatment that my previous companion gave me. But you, you know what? I do not have to anymore, thanks to you. I used to think it was ordinary for friends to show signs of malice, and I had to power through, but you have shown no sign of malice. My little friend, you have been a better companion to me in the span of a few months than the one before you who took years to hell with them, and to my family with you. I believe I have not told you the real, real reason behind why I have kept you here willingly. I have told you before, or so you think. I am not very transparent, little friend. At most, I am translucent to those I trust fully, which I Still, do not trust you fully. Do not take it personally. It will take years. The reason I kept you here as a friend, uh, well, you, you, you bring back a feeling I forgot I could feel. A feeling that gives me enough confidence to call myself a dragon. You, little friend, you, you could likely piece together what you remind me of. My family. You remind me of my entire family. You give me that solace that they would give me after an exhausting, draining day. The feeling that Hilsa would seldom give me. You remind me of her. The good side. The good side. Not the real side. Because this is your real side. Do not prove me wrong, please. My companion, I would like to return the favor, because human life is more difficult than it looks from a dragon's eye perspective. If you ever find yourself in a state of mind that proves itself to be daunting, Feel free to visit me at once. That is an order. No questions asked. Understood. Good. I will gladly take the role of your emotional support serpent. Uh, why must the sun dip down when we are the deepest in conversation? Yes, you know what? I will not send you off this time. I am not having it, son. You may stay the night, as you have been begging. Yes, I said it. You may stay the night and have a dragon sleep over with me. I will allow it before you begin begging again. Not because I want it. Sorry, that, that just came out. I do want it, maybe. Ah, oh, you, you have not had dinner yet. Not a problem, not a problem. Have I prepared food for you before? Ah, well, allow me to disprove what I said earlier about dragons not cooking. They do not cook for themselves. If they are serving 
a meal to one whose immune system cannot withstand raw meats, they use their fire breath. And we serpents, well, you, you will see. Say, my little friend, are you in the mood for fish? Say yes. Perfect. There is bound to be a fish or two. Be silent and still for me. Oh, that is sizable indeed. Mm, they are not called king salmon for nothing. Would you like the whole thing? Ah, itsy bitsy stomach. I nearly forgot. I will give you a sizable chunk and toss the rest. Take care of myself. I have not done that in a human decade or two, but fine. I suppose I will eat some as well, even though it is not nearly enough to fill me up. Better than nothing, nonetheless. Little Fred, would you like to see how a sea serpent prepares supper? Splendid. Now, this will make you reconsider at first, but allow me to finish. I will have to spit on your food. However, there will be no germs. They will all die in the process. And what is the process? Well, you may want to take a step back. Farther. 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 Stop. Squint your eyes, just in case. Cover as much of your body with your clothes as possible. Perfect. You should be safe now. Uh, this shall do the job thoroughly. Uh, watch what I can do with the water in my mouth. This never gets old. it is essential to our survival to eat plants or stones. Yes, 
We do eat stones as a snack from time to time. Tis not our ideal diet, however, so we are modest with the serving. I think I may have one of, if not the strongest bite in the animal kingdom. We keep our skulls muscles robust by instinctively clenching our jaw in our sleep. Speaking of which, how are you feeling? Drowsy yet? Yes, me neither. How about in the meantime, I take most of my body out of the water to dry off? Why? Well, because sleeping beside a soggy dragon would not be ideal. You humans prefer your beds warm and dry, yes? Yes. Then I shall obtain the dry part of that for you. It will not take long. We need no towels. We water dragons have scales that water rolls right off of. There is a word for it in English, is there not? It, uh, hydro something. Ah, uh, yes, hydrophobic. Other dragons have hydrophobic scales just on their wings so they can fly properly. Listen to the night, little friend. It sings for you. I would sing for you as well, but I have yet to build up the nerve or practice. Little friend, there is a water droplet trickling down my horn along the scales around it, and it is an itch I cannot scratch. Would you mind wiping it off for me? Many things. What dragons purr? Is the sound not terrifying and intimidating? Hmm. Wrong answer. You mispronounced terrifying and intimidating. Cute, you said. That mirror cannot hear you. Oh, nothing. I think it is time to rest. So shut your word, Valve, and lay against me. Yes, I am all right with this. Otherwise, I would not have asked. It may take a fair amount of time for you to drift into slumber in this new location, so... You enjoyed my purr, correct? Why, thanks. Uh, it's not cute. That label is reserved for your size compared to me, little one. But I digress more, and I will digress further because I wonder about something. When you have been leaving, have you been picking up on my subtle messages as you are barely in hearing range? Oh, I am joyed to hear that despite my stone face. I do not smile much. When I do, consider it a trophy, little friend. And since you are here this time, there will be no secret message. I know, I know, tragic beyond words, but that, that has got to be the least of your worries. You humans are bloated with worries. And I will do what I can to keep you from fretting in that head of yours. You may awaken whenever you feel it is necessary. If I am not awake, which I likely will be asleep, you may just leave. I will do my best to not assume you left me permanently if I wake up and my sight has no human snuggled up to it. Now, I will help you sleep since your bedtime has come slightly earlier than usual. Close your eyes, will you? Yes. 
Allow your muscle to wait. Allow your muscles to loosen. That is right. Humans have multiple muscles. I have a few. Most of them are in my face and run down my body for a couple dozen meters. But anyway, how about you allow your thoughts to wander? Create a world. Explore it. Imagine yourself on my back, basking in moonlight in the middle of a large pond, also known as a lake. Let go and think about what comes to mind. Focus on my voice if need be. Ignore it and space out if need be. Any worries you had can wait. My cave is worry-proof for you. experience with this thanks to my little brother that I cherished. You share a lot with him. Except you are small. And that is not a bad thing. The smaller you are, the more protective I am over you. I do not like being soft and honest. Insulting is far easier. Uh, I digress non-stop. Little friend. You are safe with me. No one and no thing would dare intervene with a creature my size. Nor would they want to be a threat to you while I am at your aid. Would you like a blanket? Wonderful. My wing may be a bit big, but better safe than sorry. It is warm and light, like nature's quilt. Worry not, and toss and turn as you please. I am quite the heavy sleeper, no pun intended. The only thing that would wake me would be the sound of your voice calling for help. On that note, get some well-deserved rest. I will do the same right besides you. You have earned it by not only surviving all of your bad days, but also staying in the same place as me for longer than typical, putting up with mean old me. Except I'm not really old. Oh, the, the purr. I nearly forgot. Relax, little friend and allow your guardian serpent to just do his job. This is but the very beginning.